Mm, so good morning, good evening, and good afternoon, wherever you are in the world. This, welcome to today's conversation. And I am Enolia, and I'm here with my co-host, Sarah Jane. <laughs> hello. <laughs> there you go. I was waiting for the hello. And we are especially happy to be uh, joined here by our special guest, Zanetta Wooden. Say hello, Zanetta. We're so happy to hello. have you. Hello. <laughs> happy to be here. Yes, yes. And just to give you a little intro, um, we're going to be talking to this evening or this day about unleashing the power of forgiveness. And, um, you know, Zanetta, tell, tell our audience just a little bit about yourself. Okay. Well, um, I am a um, Army vet. That's a lot of people don't know that. Um, I'm an army vet. I'm my mother of three, a grandmother of four. Um, I have uh, nine siblings, uh, five living. Let me see how many more. <laughs> so I grew up in the Philippines, um, born and raised in the Philippines, but my father is uh, American and um, uh, he was in the Air Force. And then we traveled back to the U.S. and then went back to the Philippines Grew up in the Philippines, and then I joined the military. Um, so in a nutshell, that's my background, um, but a, a colorful background later on when we talk about forgiveness. Um, and now I am a uh, federal government that, that does um, EEO um, uh, investigation. Okay. Thank yeah. you so much. <laughs> oh, my. So, you know, it's so funny because when we are here um, and we have our <clears> guests, we always ask our guests, what do they want to speak about? And you actually selected Unleashing the Power of Forgiveness. What prompted you to select Unleashing the Power of Forgiveness? Well, like I said, I had a colorful background, <clears throat> excuse me. And, um, and so there's certain things that happened in my life as a child, all the way from age four, all the way to... Um, age 19, um, where I was violated sexually. Um, mm -hmm. And and so in that, I'm, I'm making it light, um, but that's, that's several years of trauma, that's several years of um, different emotions and anger and bitterness and, and things that, that just, you know, just packed in, kept on packing and packing in. Um, and it was under the hands of my family. Mm -hmm. So, so when I joined military, thought I had a good life, thought I escaped, um, and but didn't know that I was spiraling down. I didn't know my actions of that anger, bitterness, um, unforgiveness, that was the root of everything that happened after I escaped. Um, I went into drugs. I went into alcohol. I slept around i became you know because that's what i was thinking i'm thinking this is this is what it's supposed to be this is how it's supposed to be um mm -hmm. and i didn't know that i was actually damaging my own body mm -hmm. so i had bouts of um cancer three times i almost died um and in that i asked the question what's wrong with me mm -hmm. And when I asked that question to myself, all of these emotions started coming up as if I was still four years old. Mm -hmm. And that's when I had to go through the process <clears throat> of finding out how do I come out of this? And the answer was, I had to forgive. I had to let go. And that's the reason why I chose forgiveness because when you have unforgiveness in your heart, when, when it doesn't have to be as traumatic as mine. It mm -hmm. could be a, a divorce. It could be a betrayal. It could be whatever it is. Um, anything that violates your truth, violates your, your, um, your north, you know, what your nor moral compass is, anything that violates that, you start to have pain. You, you resent. You have anger and all of that. And so in that, you you are trapped. You're imprisoned. Not by what happened, but by the emotions. Because yes. what happened, what happened. 
and it's not happening anymore, but the emotion of it, the, the, the mental, um, uh, the replay of it mentally keeps on going and going. So even today, even though I forgave my dad, even though I forgave those that did whatever to me, I still have to constantly, because our brain is a reminder of the past. It's the keeper of the past. So we have to tell our brain, "Uh, uh-uh, no, I'm not four. So we're not going to have that emotion. We're not, we're not going to go there. Um, I'm not 15. I'm not 20. I'm not, you know, I'm not with this individual anymore. So you have to tell the brain this because the the brain will remember and then the emotions will pop up and that's Mm. what it is. So it's a constant, it's a, it's a lifestyle. That's why I call it. It's forgiveness is a lifestyle. It's not a one and done, you know, um, there's certain triggers that, that goes on. Um, so yeah, and when you do forgive, you unleash it. You unleash the power of whatever it is that is holding you back. Yes. You unleash it. Yes, and I'm going to let Sarah Jane go because I know I don't even have to prompt her with a question. I could see her. <laughs> oh, no, I, <laughs> go ahead. I, 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 I so get all that. and Everybody reacts differently to the things that happen to them. And as much as my story is very, very different in some respects, in respect that I was hospitalized for three months as a baby and spent my first birthday in hospital at a time when parents couldn't stay with their children. I saw my parents once a week for an hour. That is abuse. That is abuse by the system. There is no other name for it. It's just Mm -hmm. that the system didn't realize at that point in time they were abusing. Or maybe they did. I don't know. It doesn't matter. It happened. And I've had to go through a lot, a lot of healing of that baby little girl, just like your four-year-old, who could not understand what was happening and why it was happening. So whatever our story and when we can tell our story without it, you know, you say, you know, I'm speaking about it lightly. I can speak very lightly about my story. I can even talk about my story with a smile mm-hmm. because I feel I have healed that little one inside me. And it's that healing, that healing comes in many forms and forgiveness is a huge part of that. But how do you ask a little one to forgive? Yeah, all right, we talk about forgiveness of others, and I know we'll touch on forgiveness of self, but it is the forgiveness of self as well for the way we've allowed things, how we've reacted to things. I didn't react so much with the anger, I reacted and became a people pleaser. I almost did the opposite to you. No drink, no drugs, no loads of sex, no what. Because, but everybody has the story. Everybody has how they reacted to it. Just because you're hearing one person's story and how they reacted doesn't make this not worth listening to. Because it's just realizing that, as you said, there are triggers and we, we react to things differently it doesn't mean we've been any less hurt yes and and i I just wanted i wanted to just weigh in in it because there's so many things that you said that i want to weigh in on and i i I just want to i want to make sure that we we focus right in on it first of all um to me it the fact that we can talk about it lightly means that you've forgiven and why is it that people think that they've forgiven a situation or a scenario by just saying, I forgive it. And what I mean by that is that the scenario didn't happen to you just overnight. This is a buildup. And what happens is that when things happen to us, we start conducting our lives, looking through the eyes of the pain or the trauma of those things that happened to us. And when that scenario goes on and we realize that it's consuming our lives, that didn't take place overnight. So why do we think that we can just forgive by just making a statement and saying, okay, the emotion's gone, everything's gone. 
it's all done. I'm all healed. I'm all great. I'm all better. You're fooling yourself when you do that. There is work to be done here. You know, you mentioned the inner child. You know, that's that's Sarah Jane's, you know, expertise. She loves working with the inner child. I'm looking at the 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 fact that, you know, here you are as the adult, the child, and multiple different parts of ourselves that have been traumatized and act and behave a certain way, a certain certain um I don't know, defensive way to feel like every day that we face, you know, has to be defended. And that's not a way to live. So there's so much richness here. And so I'm, I'm, I'm going to uh, just ask you, when looking at all of the things that you've gone through, when did it, when did that precipice hit you in your life? That you said something's got to shift, something's got to change. I can't live my life like this. Um, it was it was a last attempt on my life. I've attempted several times. I should have got a clue <laughs> that you know my attempts um, were protected by my Savior, by my God. Um, for those that you know have different you know beings or who they uh, or who don't. But this is my belief. My belief was, uh, my belief is that God protected me those several attempts of suicide. Um, there are several times where I knew I had it down pat. I mean, to the T. It failed, obviously, because I'm here. Um, and the very last was when the very thing that I feared happened to my own the very thing that I feared. And I went into a spiral. Um, I thought that I was, you know, living life. Like what you said, I forgave, I go to church, I pray, you know, um, uh, talk about it. But then when this happened, when it happened to my seed, my, my child, everything from the memories that I even blocked out came rushing in. Um, the memories that I didn't rem that, that I didn't uh, that I probably suppressed, all of it came rushing in, and I went into a spiral to where I just didn't want this to to happen anymore. Um, but then when I saw my child going down the same spiral, that was the press. That was the the pivot. That was. Now, this is the first time I'm ever saying this. <laughs> I've never shared this story, but I wanted this to um, to come out because even now I have been um, ridiculed and talked and said that, well, you attract these kind of people. So that's the reason why it happened, because these are generational. And I said, no, it is not. No, the blame goes on the individual not the person who is a victim. So oftentimes we blame the victim. What did you do? What happened? You know, and when I saw that, I saw the same pattern and that was a thing that I didn't forgive about myself. I blamed myself. I blamed myself that I was this. I blamed myself that I was, you, you know, put in this predicament. I blamed myself because you know, of how I look or how I presented myself. I blame myself as, as to the reason why these things are happening. And that was a part of me that I did actually look into. And so that's where the, the forgiveness came in for self. When mm -hmm. I saw my own child go through it, because now I'm forgiving, I'm, I'm now blaming myself. I didn't do it. I didn't do this to her. It didn't happen because I allowed it to happen. It happened. And so for me to be a model, for me to be a, um, a, a person to look at and see hope and see that there is an outcome to this, that there is a victory 
through this, that there is a conquering through this, it would have to be me so that my daughter can see it through me. Mm-hmm. And I had to do that. And that's, that's, that was, that was the tipping point. Sarah Jane? Um, my tipping point was actually that I ended up with a broken jaw that resulted in this dentist broken, extracting a wisdom tooth. Didn't know it was broken for a week. Um, <laughs> yeah, great. I was try- trying to eat with a broken jaw. It's not fun. Uh, and I ended up with uh, six months of pain and sleepless nights. And for somebody who's a people pleaser, that becomes very exhausting. And I just hadn't got the energy to work a full dying job. Greatly, I didn't have children. Run a home, study in a, uh, study um, accounting, and be a people pleaser. Something had to give. So temporarily, the accounting gave, <laughs> and then the marriage gave, because <laughs> the people pleasing gave. But it took exhaustion to break. So to make me realize there was something not right in my life. Why had I behaved like this? Why was I reacting as if I had to please everybody? I don't think I went into blame. What I was doing was I was just desperate for people to love me. That's why I became a people pleaser. Hopefully people will like me, even love me. I know it won't last because it never did, but I'll grab what I can while I can because they would soon wake up to the fact that I obviously wasn't a lovable person. And I think we do, we do all react differently. Our wake up call, whatever you wish to call it, is different. But we are all such special beings. And it's opening up to that, you know, The one thing I have learned to do, and I hope the same for you, Zanetta, is we've learned to love ourselves. Give ourselves the love that we were so desperately seeking. A love so pure that it helps us to forgive the individuals involved, many who actually didn't understand what they were doing, or the wrongness of it, because at the end of the day, in every situation, we don't know what's gone on in other people's lives. But don't get me wrong, I am not condoning any behavior that harms. I'm really not. But if those individuals have grown up witnessing that, that is a learned behavior. It's a wrong learned behavior. But until they really can get the hang of the fact that that is not a behavior to do, they're just going to do what they've witnessed as a child or experienced as a child. And it's helping people to do that. Forgiveness isn't about freeing them. It's about freeing ourselves. It's about realizing that that hot coal that you're holding is hurting you and it's not harming anybody else. When you can let it go and do that, give, bring that forgiveness, you stop hurting yourself. Yeah. So I'm sitting here and I'm <laughs> thinking about the story even, even more so, just everything that I've heard. And it brought me back to a time where, you know, growing up myself, um, we all go through our traumatic events. You know, my father fought in World War II. They had me very, very late in life. My mother was 48 when she had me. And, um, you know, I never knew my parents young. So when I got to meet my father, you know, he was always, he, he had his alcoholic tendency, you know. And it was, I was probably 12 years old when I saw my father and mother had their first physical confrontation. And I remember being 12 and running in the middle of that and them stopping immediately because, I'm sorry, I have to turn that off. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Having their first physical confrontation and then having to be, you know, they they stopped because I was there. And then it, it changed my look with my father completely from that moment on, you know, and I didn't understand because 
what they call now is post post traumatic stress syndrome, right? P PSTD. But I didn't under I didn't understand what that was at that time, and now I can look back, and I can say that. So here he was, you know, an alcoholic, a person who was finding his solace in the in in, in the alcohol. And I remember several times having physical confrontations with him. And I also remember when I came to a precipice later in my life, when I was like, okay, I can't keep doing this because here I was, I had two boys with my husband. I'm the only woman in the house. And I had this disdain for my father and what, how I was treating them was from the point of pain from my father. And I remember having to confront that within myself. And I remember having to say, okay, how am I going to do this? What am I going to do? What does forgiveness look like? And one of the things that I did, because he had passed away, he had passed away when he was 60 years old. He passed away. He never got to see me with sons and everything else, but yet he was so ever present with everything with me. And, and I created this altar and I took some of his favorite items that he loved. So I knew they were imbued with his energy. And I remember saying this prayer probably for about five or six months before it really, really took, which was, I forgive my father, my father's father and his father. It stops with me. And most of all is I forgive myself. And the reason I said it stops with me is because I wanted to modify the behaviors that gave me that disdain towards men because I was in a house full of men. <laughs> and because I was recreating unconsciously that, that behavior that was just enough to just like my boys and I would be at each other or my husband and I would be at each other at the time. You know, and it's like, what am I doing? Where is this coming from? And it's because I didn't realize that I was seeing through the eyes of pain. I was reacting from the eyes of pain. I was defending myself in every scenario through the eyes of pain. And that the forgiveness was the key in the door that unlocked my freedom. And so for me, that freedom came, but it didn't come Overnight, it came after three, four, five months worth of work, confronting myself, you know, talking to the little girl that needed to be healed from 12 years old, all the way to the adult that needed to be healed, the young adult that needed to be healed at, at 18 and 20 years old, because he said some very, very hurtful things to me, you know, and then I also realized, okay, being a shaman, being a medicine woman that I am too, that it was like he couldn't even be released on the other side until I forgave him. So that's what forgiveness looked like for me. What did forgiveness look like for you? So to me, um, it meant freedom. Freedom uh, of any kind of thought, um, the emotion that comes with it. Um, you know, the freedom to actually show up as me. Mm -hmm that that is the essence uh, of um, the, the only way that I can explain forgiveness for me is that I you get to see the fullness of me. You don't see the four year old, the timid four year old, the hurt four year old. You don't get to see the betrayed um, 12 year old. You, you don't get to see, you know, so those are the, the different things that molded me as to who I am today. It, those experiences, I don't dismiss it but I use it as a stepping stone to how it build me as to who I am today, mm -hmm. that I can speak um, towards those things that happen that are so traumatic um, that I can show the power as to what forgiveness does because it gives you the power over the trauma. It gives you the power over that pain. It gives you the power over that anger or whatever it is. It gives you that, it gives you control as to what is going to be allowed in you now. 
So when, for example, of course we have a lot of shows, a lot of TVs, a lot of movies. Um, there's a lot of movement that is going on. So for those that still are in, you know, the transition of uh, finding forgiveness, those are triggers and that can compound. Um, I mentioned in, in, a, in a broadcast that I'm not on the bandwagon of me too, because I'm no longer a victim. I can support, I'm a supporter of Me Too movement, but I'm not a Me Too because I'm no longer there. I'm, I'm past that. I'm, um, I, I, the book that I wrote, I, I was uh, inspired to write the book. I told my husband the story and he said, you need to write it. You, you need to share with the world. Um, and and the uh, I like what you said because it's in my book as well. Forgiveness is the key to unlock all of those emotions so you can set it free. Um, and in writing that book, it also gave me the therapy that I needed. Because <laughs> <laughs> there's just something about writing pen to paper and releasing it and, yeah. and you're reading it and it's just therapy. Um, so that, uh, for me, forgiveness is really being who you really are, the core you, not the traumatized you. Um, because if you, if you, if I go back to my life, there's other things that happen, you know, at 19, at 20, at 21, you know, uh, 23 years of marriage down the drain. Um, so there's a lot of things that happen during those times that cause trauma, that cause, you know, pain and anger and all of this and betrayal. Um, and so all of that comes with just um, to unleash all of it. So there's that there's that moment, like I like what Sarah Jane said, you know, there's that tipping moment of where you were. And that's the the beginning of the rest that will follow. It's like a domino effect. Um, oh, oh, I remember you betrayed me, but we can talk now because I've, I've, I've released it. I don't hold it, I don't own it because um, that emotion no longer belongs to me because I love me. I went through that pain and that pain allowed me to grow. That pain allowed me to stretch that pain allowed me to become stronger. That pain allowed me to work out my faith, my faith muscles, my, uh, my confidence muscles. It allowed me to grow. So that's what it is. That's what forgiveness is for me. It's to be the core. I, everything that happened to me, I can't dismiss it. I can't say it didn't happen, but ultimately, Everything that did happen is because of who I am today. Yep. Yeah. Absolutely. That forgiveness gives us permission to be ourselves. And that's what I felt. It was, I remember that day I was stood in the kitchen. Well, I think actually I was with my to be ex. <laughs> and it was just suddenly thinking, why am I worrying about what other people think of me? Because do you know what? They're not. They really aren't. Because they've got so much going on in their own lives, they're really not thinking about me. And okay, if you want to go into the humorous side, who the heck do I think I am to think everybody's thinking about me? Um, <laughs> Um, and, and I can make that light, but it was that light bulb. Why am I worrying? Because they aren't. And okay, slowly over the years, it's the, and even if they are, and if they pass comments you don't like, actually, that's their stuff. So it became about, I can really let go of this. I can really step in to doing things that 
I wish to do. And so when I told the family that my marriage was over, my mother's reaction was, look at everything you've got, look what you're giving up. And it was just like, okay, so we only had a £5,000 mortgage. Um, we had the money in the bank to pay that off. We had two cars. We had four holidays every year. And it was just like, mother, this is about me. This is not about things. And it gave me the courage to stand up and say, no. This is my life. This is about me. My ex even accused me of running away. And it was actually, you know what? I'm not running away. I'm actually stepping into my future. And that can be the power of forgiveness. Is you take your power back. And that is what I did. And that's what it was about for me. I appreciated that I got a very long way to go. And when I moved out of the family home, well, family home, it was just two of us. Oh, and the cats. Um, when I moved out of the family home, I moved down to where I live now. Well, to Bournemouth. Um, it was just like, I feel so blessed. But what can I do for me to help me to support my it didn't become about anybody else. It became about me because me had never been in the mix for nearly 40 years. So folks, if you are out there, it is okay to think about you. It is essential to love yourself. It is essential to take care of you. Because until we do that for ourselves, we can never truly bring it for others. Self has to come first. And so forgiveness of others frees us. But we take that extra step of forgiving ourselves of how we reacted and how we allowed things to affect us so that we can step forward into our future. And it may mean we leave people, things, jobs behind. But that's just a part of the freedom of becoming true to you. Yeah. I'm sitting here listening to this and um, it's interesting because it looks different for everyone and many people get stuck in the story. They get stuck in the story that cycles them and cycles them and cycles them to just relive the story over and over and over again. And it's really powerful when you opened up with this story because not just one thing happened to you. So, you know, I've met many people who have suffered sexual assault or domestic abuse or, you know, but to a range of, of traumatic events over and over and over in their life. Um, the strength that you have to find to stand up in your truth, in your authenticity is huge. What would you tell those who are stuck in their story that don't recognize that they need to stop and move through the story? Because especially when you're, when you're coaching and you're working with people, you have those people who are at that crossroads who are just stuck in the story. They just can't see anything else. What would you say to them? I had to do it to myself. Mm -hmm. um, because I like what you said, you're stuck in the story. And you are, you are literally stuck mm -hmm. in the past. And then you have to really come to the terms. Are you really, or is it just your mind? Because you have an everyday work, you go to work, or maybe you don't. Maybe you're a housewife or, or a stay-at-home dad or whatever it is, or you're single. 
and you work from home or whatever your life is, whatever your life is right now, you are carrying through life daily. But there's just that one moment that takes you back and then you're back into that stuck mode again. So if you can really be conscious, just be conscious as to where you are at right now. I understand for those that are in it, um, they need to, uh, because I've been in the whole sex trade as well. So I know that escaping the sex trade is very tricky. You, you have to have an escape route. You have to, you, you know, um, or your life could be endangered. And my life was endangered several times. Um, but I can speak on it now for those that are out of it. Because those that are still in it, they can be in danger. So, um, and I'm also a speaker for RAIN, which is Rape, Abuse, Incest National Network. Um, so we're careful as to how we speak or how we, you know, uh, address certain things uh, with the sex um, abuse um, range, because there is a whole range of it. Um, but for those that are out and that are stuck, Look at your life right now. If you're married, you have a husband, you have children. Look at that. Focus on what is the now and how you are dealing with the now. I'm pretty sure they have jobs. I'm pretty sure they have um, they have had celebrated birthdays. They have mm -hmm. celebrated holidays. Um, those are the things that you put your mind back to because your mind, like what I said, is a keeper of the past. It's a recorder of the past, but that's just it. It just records it, but you can tell it. Yeah, that happened, but I'm here now. Um, another thing that I wanted to um, address is what Sarah Jane said, you know, uh, forgiving others. Um, before you can do that, before you can forgive others, um, the, the very most important thing uh, that's being said here is to forgive yourself. Mm -hmm because you can't give anything that you don't have. You have to have forgiveness first before you can give forgiveness. So work with you, work with you, work on those issues that, you know, that happen. Acknowledge when you accept it, not condone it, but you accept that it did happen because you can't change the past. Nobody can change the past. I wish we could. <laughs> I wish I could go back to my four-year-old self and, and have a lovely childhood, um, but I can't because that's impossible. Um, that would be a sci-fi movie. <laughs> yeah. um, so we can't change anything. So accept it, but show, see yourself where you're at today, how you overcame that, how you came out of it. That's what you look at. That's what you focus on. Whoa, I am not there. I am actually here. I graduated high school. I graduated college. Oh my God, I have a degree. I have a great job. I have great friends. So these are the things that, because we, we miss on the beauty of life when we go back. We miss the beauty of love and the, the 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 gracious uh, um, companionship of friends we miss it if we st stay stuck so when when those triggers do come when uh, they will because they still do to me <laughs> I, I hear a story bam I'm I'm back there again but I see myself today oh no I can do something you know it, like what Sarah Jane said it gives you that courage Forgiveness gives you that fuel of courage to speak up. Forgiveness gives you that fuel of courage to stand up. Forgiveness gives you that fuel to, um, I will be here for you. I'll be your strength for you while you recover. I will be your strength. I will be your voice. I will be your, your confidence. I will be that until you come to where I'm at. That's what forgiveness does. So, and, and um, <laughs> there, I, I, see, uh, I see myself 
at, when you were talking about how you were, um, you know, uh, having your relationship with your sons, how you were looking through the eyes of your father. I'm raising a nine-year-old and we're blessed by her. Um, and sometimes I'm looking through the eyes of when I was four, of when I was 12, of when I was, you know, 22, of when I was 27, when it happened to my daughter. Sometimes I'm seeing through those eyes. So it is a lifestyle. So you have to bring yourself back to today, to now, to where I'm at, to where you're at, to what you've accomplished. How many accomplishments, how many victories there are far more victories far more wins far more accomplishments that you have done than the many traumas that you've experienced that's powerful that's beautiful and it's powerful and i hope our audience is listening thank you for sharing from your heart sarah jane <laughs> I think it's realizing that the healing journey, as I refer to it, is the layers of the onion. It's one step at a time. And for me, the onion is a brilliant analogy. One, it comes in layers, and usually when you cut it, it makes you cry. Um, <laughs> allow the tears. Allow yourself. But if you're, you're still in that place, you haven't managed to get to that stage where you've got that wake-up call. You can choose to wait for the wake up call, or you can choose to take your life in hand and find the support to get you through it. But it's your choice. There's many a person I've spoken to who have said, I'm not ready. And they're not. I had to have a wake up call. You had to have a wake up call. We had to have wake up calls. And there are many of us, you've only got to listen to so many stories shared by so many people and some of them way more, well, not that I consider myself famous, but way more famous than we are. But we are, pe we are the people now putting our voices out there. There are many, many who will tell you their story of losing everything, of losing their health, of losing this, of losing that. And they have gone to nothing and they've had to build themselves back up. That was their wake up call. So you can wait for your wake up call. Or you can say, I'm listening. This is my wake up call. And you can, I'm not saying it's going to be easy. It's not. But do you know what? It is so worth while just that freedom of oh boy i mean the weight that lifted off my shoulders when it's why am i worrying about what other people think they're not oh my god the freedom of that understanding was enormous for me i wouldn't change a thing that happened to me and it wasn't just one thing. There were multiple little things on top of the big thing. But I wouldn't change a single one of them because I wouldn't be right here, right now, doing what I do and I don't. I wouldn't be able to support people in the way that I do if I hadn't been through what I've been through. And that power of forgiveness of self as you said, Zanetta, it's where it starts. And for me, in supporting other people to have an element of understanding, you haven't got to like what happened, but an element of understanding can truly support them, not only to forgive themselves, because they were in a place as a child where they hadn't got the knowledge, the know-how, the power to be able to stop it and say no. So to forgive themselves for their reaction to that, but also to be able to then 
say, okay, because I can understand, I may not like it, I don't like it, I can also forgive. And as you said, it, it stops with me. It does not go down the next year. I haven't had kids, so, you know, hopefully it will, I won't then bring it on to nieces and nephews and, and great nieces and nephews. But it, it, it stops with me. And there are many of us here to support you, to help yourself through your journey. When you are ready, all I suggest is find the right person for you. And that is why so many of us do programs like this, to share our story, how we have supported ourselves and can support others. You haven't got to come to us, but listen to what is out there. And feel the energies of the people you're listening to. And you will find the right people for you, as I did, as I'm sure both of you have. To get where you got, we didn't do it all ourselves. But we had to do the greatest chunk of the work to make it happen for us. Yeah, and I, I want to capitalize kind of like right on <laughs> okay, I want to capitalize right on that too, because, you know, one of the key things that is not being said is that at a certain point, you made a decision. No more. And I, I really want to emphasize the power of making that decision. Okay, and the power of making that decision, especially when you're in an abusive relationship or you've just suffered a sexual assault. Um, whatever the scenario may be, that power of decision is here and here. In your heart, you've decided, I'm not going to do this anymore. I am not going to take this anymore. I am not going to feel this anymore. It starts here. And a lot of times we think that, okay, now that I've made that decision here and I've made that decision here, I got to go do something. And that's not necessarily the case. It's not necessarily the case. It might be making that decision in your heart and then gestating it for a while. Now, what does that look like for me? What does that feel like for me? Okay, the masculine side of us wants to do something. Do, 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 do. And then the feminine side of us, we gestate and we basically sit with that we look at it from every direction and then we make choices or plans or whatever the case may be to say, okay, this is how I could shift myself. And sometimes that's as simple as I will no longer lie to myself and not act like that this isn't taking place. I will no longer deny the fact that I am in a situation that is horrific and it's got to change. Okay, now, how can I change this? Sit, look. What decision have you been making that keeps that pattern going, that habitual piece going, 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 going? How have you been looking at yourself? Are you feeling like you're not worthy because we're all worthy? We all have to make that inner decision to say that I am worth fighting for myself and then we redefine the boundaries of fear we're all in a bubble of fear there's certain boundaries our ego likes to work in and because it's an ego and it has um a polarity and this is what's good that's what's bad this is what's right that's what's wrong we, we we're all always going back and forth with that redefining what that fear bubble or that bubble looks like where we're comfortable or where we figure we can operate. And how do we surpass that? And even if it's baby steps, little by little, by little, by little, by little. And once we start on that path, 
and I go right back to what Zanetta said. It's like, I am connected with the divine. Divine, show me, show me, show me. Show me how to get out of here. Show me how to change my situation. Show me how to make a better decision. Show me what decisions have to be made. And internalize that. And dare to step into it. At the pace that you're ready to. At the pace that you feel safe to. But at a pace. And the beauty of that strength and that courage blossoming, growing within you is what takes us through the stories. It truly, truly is. So all of this, all of this, this wisdom tonight, I just have, this is wisdom tonight. And I hope those who are listening glean something really, really great out of this because People aren't this forthcoming coming about their stories, <laughs> you know, and this is how, you know, how, how, how do I get to the point of forgiveness? Because to me, forgiveness is total freedom. Forgiveness is the freedom because no one is making me look through the eyes of a victim. No one is making me look through the eyes of pain. No one is making me look through the eyes of anything, but what I choose for myself on how to live, how to be, how to exist, and what my worth looks like. And we all are worthy. Yes. So if you had any tips for anyone out there listening, what would that be? What would, what would be like the last thing you would like to leave them with? Well, you know, because this is such a um, an ongoing topic. It and, is. Um, I would say for those that are not ready, it's okay. It is okay. If you're not ready to forgive, it is okay. If you don't have the strength to make that decision, it is okay. We have a whole bunch of people, um, thank God for internet. Thank God for, you know, YouTube. Thank God for programs like this that you can tune into. And if that's how you can make those baby steps, do so. Allow someone else to be that strength for you. Um, I've had many clients that say, I, I, I want to do this, but I don't know how and I don't have the strength. And my answer to that is, I'll be there right with you every step of the way. Let me be that strength. Um, the analogy I would give is a mother with a child trying to have the child learn to walk. You know, you'll trip sometimes, but it's okay. You, you'll get back up and you'll eventually walk, which you are, which we, we all do, unless you have, you know, a very severe um, medical, um, you, you know, situation. But it's okay. It is okay. Do it on your own time. Um, but know that you are worth every, every love, every freedom, every confidence, every uh, joy, um, every happiness. You are worthy of that. You are worthy to have a great life. You are worthy to have a voice. You are worthy to live. And um, do it on your own terms. I do have a book out. Um, it's Unleashing the Power of Forgiveness. It's the steps that I made. Um, I'm not making that as a, uh, you know, as a cure-all. Um, but it was a download from, from God when I was writing the, the book. I didn't even know that the steps that I made was actually the acronym for forgiveness. So each of the steps, the first one was F, come face to face with the pain, not the abuser. That's the first step. Um, and so that's the, those are the steps that I did. Um, and if, um, if your viewers would, um, probably chime in and say, you know, hey, we love this story, uh, whether on replay, 
um, I would like to have a book, I will gift them the book. So there you go. Thank you. <laughs> That's phenomenal. Thank you. Oh, th thank you so much. It really, we will make sure that your website address is under the video on YouTube. Um, and we've made sure that your, um, your details are also um, on the website, Gift Appealing TV, and then we've it's under today's conversation. Um, your details are all under there, so just folks can see it. And this replay will be up on there as well, but you know, people Absolutely. will find this. And we will make sure that um, we share it. We'll let you also share it. <laughs> if yes, you, thank I you. hope you will. Yes. Um, so, that folks can, so that folks can get in touch with you. And also Magnolia and myself. And if for any reason you're having trouble with getting hold of Zanetta, email me at giftofhealingtv.com, uh, gmail, sorry, giftofhealingtv at gmail.com. And I will make sure that the email gets across to, um, to, Zan to Zanetta. And I'm sure Anolia would do the same. Um, Absolutely. All, because all our details are on, on that website as well. So please go and check that out. Um, and thank you so much. I, thank I'm, you. I'm, I'm pretty certain we could go on for a very long time, but we won't. We will draw it to a close there. Yes, thank <laughs> you. Thank I, you so I, much for having me. Oh, it, it has been oh, a real pleasure. pleasure. <laughs> and Absolutely. Here, if you do need to, to drop off, because you, I know you've got, got unfortunately got something else booked, please feel free. I'm just going to. So I can, I can wrap up with you. I can wrap up with you. I'm okay. okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> thank you so much. And what I'm going to say is our next program, today's conversation, is on Wednesday the 27th. Oh, she's gone. <laughs> Bless her. Um, Wednesday the 27th um, of October. Today's conversation is The Shadow Side of Love with Junie Moon um, Schreiber. It's going to be joining myself and Enolia. So I hope that you will join us for that. In the meantime, folks, thank you to Zanetta, although she's gone. Thank you, Zanetta. <laughs> That, thank you to Enolia for, for guiding us through this one. <laughs> Absolutely. And thank you to all of you, whether you're watching live, whether you're watching the replay. It's been a pleasure to have you with us. Good night, folks, or good day, folks, <laughs> wherever you may be. Take care, be safe, love, peace, and light. Namaste.